So welcome back. We'll continue with our uh, saga to create the Stellar Eagle arcade shoot 'em up. And I think we'll get to right to the point. Start creating some files and we'll start uh, to fill the files with code. And I actually had some notes on that. Um, okay, so I'm thinking on how to call the. Actually, let, let me. Um, doodle a bit. I can use Corel Draw. Hmm. I can use whatever. It's the same. I'm just used to it. So basically we have our screen. Okay. Um, we'll have score it. The score for the players. Okay. And then we we'll have... I will put all the elements on the screen. We'll have our little ship. Okay, we'll have uh, enemy ships. And we'll also have actually let me use this for bullets or projectiles. Projectiles. We can also fire projectiles. Okay. We'll also have bosses, big ships. In the background, there will be a background tile. Which is the score? Enemies. Of the boss, yeah, project terminal. Okay, and also items like uh, power ups. No, so these are items. Okay. So let's see. Each of these objects should be like uh, called a unit or entity or something like that. But I like unit because it I don't know it's um, for me it suits better the 2D games unit and not entity. Entity it's more like for 3D games in my in my brain. So we'll use units unit for one object. And I have some details in my notebook. Okay, I think we we could actually start coding the The thing. Okay, let's let's do it. We'll start doing it anyway. Too much preparation. Okay, so we'll have uh, we'll I usually create the empty files because it, they give me like an idea of what's to be done, and then I start to fill the code. This is my way of doing things. 
So let's create some files for the engine. We have the types, we'll fill them up with uh, simple types. And then we'll have um, a sprite, which will be a single image, actually multiple images, um, with uh, an array of animations, frame animations. Okay, let's also sprite.cpp. What else? Um, okay, sprite instance because the sprite itself will be just uh, the asset, the image data, the textures, but you will use the sprite instances in the units. So you will have Right instance. Okay. And also right instance. The CPP. What else will have unit? Unit dot edge. Unit CPP. Okay, let's see instances. Okay, we also have uh, the unit animation. Let's just call it animation. Animation dot page. Because we can animate the units. For example, for the for the um, bosses, we can have like intro animations, uh, attack uh, stage changing. So you will have a new animation for that. Exit that animation and so on. Animation just moving the the units and probably rotation and scale. Maybe toggling uh, visibility on off but we'll see okay animation animation cpp okay we'll also have some kind of uh, special units which will be or maybe we can the tile maps i wonder if we should uh, Keep them as unit, or we should make some new. Actually, we'll have them derived from unit. So we'll have like tile map. Tile map CPP. Okay, the backgrounds basically. All right. Uh, what else? The game itself, we have uh, okay, the game. The game is the central core game. And game CPP, C game H. All right. Oh, already we have so much code, but with empty files. Okay, now we also have weapons, but the problem is uh, I don't want them to be to be separated. The unit itself should be weapon or not. Okay, and also we'll have projectiles which will be units by themselves with some boolean flag or something like that. To have the, the unit type, the unit type can be several things. Okay, the collision stuff. Yeah, we could have. We also have the the graphics. 
which would be let's just call it graphics for now. Graphics. Also have the level, which is describing the unit placement of the waves, the enemy waves, and so on. Um, level CPP. Okay, the level. What else? Uh, I think for now it, we have way more than enough to start on. We we'll probably not see too much on the screen for a few time. Okay. I think we should also have. Um, hmm layer because we'll have multiple layers but I'm wondering if I should keep them in a single uh, mm -hmm. in a single uh, uh, array vector or should I keep them separated the units per layer and they should maybe just have some layer ID or layer index Okay, let's start with what we have for now. Alright, let's generate the solution again. Generate. And we should have all the files added. Alright. Okay, let's pick one. Probably we'll pick the types. The types file. We'll put some simple types in here. And there we go. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, we should include some. Standard stuff. And there is something for C++. Whatever, include. Stdlib. C. Stdlib. Right. Let's see if it works. <coughs> Include uh, C. Stdint for integer stuff. Let's make it smaller. I hope you can see the code. I can make it bigger. Okay. Um, I don't think I will um, put uh, my classes in the namespace. Maybe I should, but I don't think it's really important for the scale of this project. But yeah, we could do it. Namespace engine. And uh, we should define uh, some simple types. I actually have some code, I will just copy paste it. Because I don't want to do it yet again. So this is the this is the secret developers do not share, they copy paste stuff. At least myself. Okay, we'll just take these. Probably will not need all of them, but 
I'll just put them in here. And we should replace the this project. We could just replace it with engine. And that's it. I like to use this uh, notation for the simple types. It's clear enough. Okay. I think it's okay. What else? Um, by the way, we will not use like some very abstract, abstract component based scene graph or whatever. It's really not needed for the this type of project. Very simple. Okay. Should we compile it? I don't know. Build. Okay, it's compiling the third party libraries. SDL. Errors. Okay, we are good for now. <coughs> okay, well, I can actually do this. All right, we have some simple types, and we can start on the lower level classes. We could do it in C, -ish, but it's okay to have like simple classes for the game. Any errors? Yeah, this is not ah, in the main. Okay. We'll get there. So, five more ones. We are doing the not the level, the sprite. Five more ones. Namespace engine. And we do the plus sprite. Alright. One. We have a constructor, which I don't know what we'll do. We have a destructor. It's not virtual because we do not inherit. Actually, I will not. I will stop with the details. Okay. Actually, I don't know if it should be actually a class. I think it, even a structure is. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we should also need some kind of a resource manager, resource provider or something like that, loader. Okay, let's see now. Should we make it a class or a structure? Very simple structure. The sprite is an image. Actually, multiple images. Hmm. Struct image. So the question is now, should we keep all our uh, images in a, yes we should actually, in an atlas. 
Okay, then we'll do like this. The sprite is a collection of images. And that would be a very fixed array of images. Image pointer. I'm not using smart pointers, maybe I should use. I don't know. Images the Atlas image images no pointer we'll define it later. Okay, we have input to image count. Very simple stuff. Okay, we'll do it. it C -ish, C plus ish some parts of it. Down zero. Yes, we need to uh, include the types. Okay, so the sprite is images, image count. Also, the sprite has animations for those images. And to be like, we could put it here actually. Start so it's simple. Right animation. What is a sprite animation? Very simple. Start. Count and um, animation type. It can be like from begin to end, or from end to begin, or ping pong, like uh, animate from begin to end, and then to begin to to end to begin. Uh, okay. And also some okay. Let me see. Should we define the sprite animation here, or should we define define the sprite animations in the in the instance of the sprite? Yeah, I think we should define it here. So. We'll have uh, um, uh, animation, animation type, and we'll have like this in class type. Um, Normal reverse ping pong type, which should be by default uh, type normal. Okay. E32 actually no, E32 repeat count plus zero. Zero means means infinite. By the way, you should not really comment your code until it's stable in the in its structure because you'll You'll delete, you'll uh, move parts of the code, and you'll have to remake the comments. But here is pretty clear and the repeat count. When zero, it's infinite. 
Okay. Let's initialize these two. Zero. Zero for now. Okay, so this is an animation. Range animation of the sprite. And we'll also have many animations. Right animation, we will know this. Animations. We don't do it like uh, with uh, std vector because um, um, this will not be dynamic. They will just load from the file, we'll create them, and that's pretty much it. They will not be resized or whatever. Okay, so this is a sprite. Uh, I wonder how we should. Um, Um, reference this sprite in the data files, in the JSON files when you create. Uh, yeah, probably we'll just use the file name or something like that. Alright. I think that's pretty much it for the sprite. Not too much. Let's go to the sprite instance because it's. We don't even need the CPP for now at least. Sprite instance. So this is an instance of the sprite inside the unit. Let's include the types as usual. Namespace engine. What is a sprite instance? It's also a structure. And what does it have inside? It has the sprite itself. Structure sprite. Sprite. Okay. Uh, and it also have a, has a position, so we get into other stuff we need to create types. Let's put it in types because we have a um, should should it be a class or um, we need a vector two D a two D vector class. I think I will also grab that from my code. Back to the code stealing. And I think I should have it somewhere. You can use whatever if you will do such kind of project. You can use whatever classes you have already made. So I have a point here. I will just rename it back. 2D or something. So a lot of functions for 2D vectors. Okay, quite a lot of them. I'll probably put it in a separate file. So we have engine, we call it back to Yeah, it's okay. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. Let's close them up. Okay, back to let's regenerate. I don't know if I have. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Vector. Arma one. 
Yes. Include parts. Namespace engine. Based on amazing huge code. I'll go to it. I'll go through it a little bit, but it's really not that complicated. Let's rename it and give it back to Do it. So it's the usual vector two, vector two D. Dot product distances and so on. I'm checking now if I have some reference to other classes. Mm. I should not. Okay, okay, should be okay. Do I have something for the C plus plus file? I don't think so. Okay, should be enough. Let's go back to our sprite instance. So the sprite instance will also need to make two. And the sprite instance uh, has a position inside the unit. And uh, probably it should also have a scale. And it should also have a rotation. But now I'm wondering if we. Actually, no. Should be okay. So it should uh, rotate around its rotation around center. Right. Bounds. Center. So it will not uh, have a pivot. Pivot. I don't think I will need it, but yeah, probably I don't know. When we, when we animate them, we might need a pivot. Let me think a bit if we should. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, I'll just leave it like this. If I really want the pivot, I'll create a new unit, a child unit, and I'll put uh, a sprite inside that unit so I can create a pivot by the unit position like this. So this is the unit center. Too small. This is the unit center, and if I have a sprite, I can put it here, which will be relative to the unit position itself. So when you rotate them, they will rotate. Like this kind of, but you know what I mean. So they're already like this around this point. So it's okay, we don't need that. <coughs> okay, I like to have them separated. Position is zero, 0, we don't need that, and scale is. Back to one by default. Uh, 
Also, the sprite instance has an animation, which is an index in the sprites uh, animation array. Animation index, the first one. If the scale is negative, then the sprite instance will be mirrored, flipped on x axis or y axis. Mm -hmm. I wonder we should also add a z order here. Mm. Probably I'll just use the position in the sprite instance uh, vector as the z order so I will just render them from first to last yeah I don't need a z order here I think that's pretty much about for the sprite instance not too much Okay, tile map is a bit more complicated and we need to code the unit first, which we can do it right now. Right now. We also need the vec. Name space. Okay, so unit, unit, unit. It should also be a structure. We'll see later if we, we will add methods. We, we can add methods to the structure. Doesn't have to be a class. Unit. But the problem is Mm, yeah, we could have a unit definition. Yeah, okay, the unit itself is the one that is a unit instance, but we we'll just call it unit. And what does a unit have? So to have a Sprite. Okay, we'll go dynamic on this one. Vector. It will have sprite instances. Okay. Uh, actually, why would I need pointer here? Hmm. How big is this right instance? Yeah, I don't think we need a pointer. Now oh, we need pointer if we don't want to include it. Yeah, I don't know. We can do it like this. Let's keep the big ones first. The standard ones. This should be fine. It's not that big. It's very small. Can just have a. Doesn't have very complex types. These are the sprite instances found in one unit. For example, if we want to have like do don parky again, do do don parky. So 
So let's find the boss. Boss. Okay. So sprite instances would be um, like for example these fires could be a sprite instance. Uh, maybe the the two heads here can be sprite instances when they are damaged or not. Or also they can be a unit can also have child units will which will be relative in position to the parent uh, unit so for example the 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 gun here the weapon is a child uh, unit of the big ship so you have like kind of a hierarchy also the the small weapons here around the ship are like child uh, units Also, see those tank tanks. They also have like a, a main body, is the an unit, the main unit with no parent, and the turret is a child uh, unit with a animated sprite. So when you move the tank, the child units will also move with it. I think same for the helicopters. Let's go back a bit. But I guess you got the idea. So I have the helicopter. Okay. So the helicopters have the the blade spinning as a separate probably maybe I don't know. Probably not. But as an example, you can make it separated uh, a sprite uh, instance and the body of the helicopter it can be the main parent sprite instance and so on but we'll get there and you'll see how it will work we'll see how it will work I don't know yet if it will work but we hope so alright so unit what else it also have a, a vector. I made them vector and not just a simple uh, pointer array because uh, maybe you want to destroy sprite instances while in gameplay, and maybe you want to. I mean, for sure you'll want to destroy a child units. Um, when, for example, you destroy a weapon or something like that, you'll have to remove it, and it's easier with STD vector, STL vector. Okay, so we'll have like unit children. We have the children units. Okay, yeah, we also have the unit. Um, Team type or something like that. The new class team, and the team should be really simple. It's either um, player or enemy or something like that. Okay, enemy. Which will be the actual enemy ships. Could just call it baddies and goodies or something like that. Actually, not a bad idea, but it's okay. Enemy and player. You could also have a neutral. That might complicate things a bit. Hmm. If we put a unit as neutral, it will be like, I don't know, some plants or whatever stuff. Uh, with which you do not interact, nor the enemy 
Hmm. Interesting. Let's see. Yeah, I think it's okay to have neutral. All right. We we'll also have a team. Team. And it should be enemy by default. Just because. We also have um, for the unit itself. We also have uh, a transform. <coughs> Maybe I should make a small structure with transform. Yeah, that's okay. We have back to position back to scale which will scale the children units also relative and also have a rotation because you have only one axis There is also some kind of, uh, <coughs> I don't know if it's here, but in other games you have like um, shadows. Okay, shadow here. So you see the ship, the ship has shadow. Come on, what's with the compression? Okay, so they have shadows, but those are for the, from the sprites. Mm. I think I'll leave it for the sprite, the shadow itself. Yeah, actually, it's for the instance of the unit. Okay, that's Boolean has shadow okay and in the sprite we should have some kind of um, we can use the mask of the sprite to make a black shadow and we can also scale it yeah so we don't need anything else of course, in some situations, you'll have to have a custom shadow because the, the sprite itself might be, yeah, I don't know. Let's start with simple shadows. Okay, so it has shadows. Then we'll cast shadows for all the uh, sprites in the unit but it doesn't have by default scale is like two rotation zero rotation zero all right And if it has shadows, then uh, F32 shadow scale, it will be a uniform scale. If it's one, then it's uh, if it's one with the same size of the unit, but we also have a shadow offset 
So we will offset the shadow from the unit itself. And by default this, I don't know, we can even put some default silhouette. Uh, I don't know the axis it should be. So it should be like this, I don't know. Let's, let's just leave it zero. And um, the unit uh, it can be hit at some point. And I wonder if we should do it here or not. Mm. We also need some color class. Color four. Um, tint color. So this is the color when when the ship is hit, it will flash. Let me see. Probably for for bosses you can see it better. This in the shadows. Come on, show me something. You will see when it's hit, it will basically change color or not here. Let's search also another shmup. Okay. So you can see it's blue when it's being hit. So you want that kind of thing. Okay. So hit tint color. And if it's hit right now. And we need the color for class. Which of course we should have it somewhere here. And we can steal it. Steal the color. Yes, it's here. Just a simple class for colors. Let's create it. Color. Maybe just color. Name. I should, have, should find a way to create files faster. And color CPP, I don't think I need it, or maybe. Yeah, I think I need it. Okay, generate. Yes. Color. Like my ones. I don't think I need types. Alright, I don't need this. Actually, I need types. <coughs> Nice range of functions for this color class. We generate a random color. We have some default values, which I'll put them right now. 
I have to find it somewhere. I think it's this one. Yeah. Alrighty. Include color. I'll just use namespace directly here. Actually, I could. Oh, it's okay. Should be fine. All right, we have the functions. And some random color. And we have some default colors. That's pretty much it. And save unit just call perfect. Yes, we should include it. All right, so this is the color when we when the unit is hit. This will be set by the upper level logic. And the collisions and whatnot. All right. What else we have in unit? Okay. We could also have a layer index, or just layer. I don't know. Yeah, from there, simple. But index is better because you know the index. So this is uh, good to set when you want to separate the background units from the final vegetation units and uh, the enemy units plus player. And you can also skip a lot of collision detection checking um, between two units which do not have the same layer index. I could use like some kind of layer class that will layer structure that will just skip units, but I don't know. Should I? Because then you can iterate over the units in that layer hmm. that's actually not a bad idea mm. 